roll out the carpet, the king is coming to town. Now's the perfect chance to invite him to your chateau, show off your spoon collection, and have a quiet word about that pesky silverware tax. The only problem is those dastardly Barclays in the chateau next door no doubt have the same idea. Who cares about collecting chess sets anyway? You just so happen to know the king has a weakness for pie. Hi, I'm Daniel and welcome to Food for Thought, where the games table and dining table meet to create lasting memories. I'll be pairing a game with an edible dish and showing you how I've prepared everything and give you some of my impressions on the game. Today we're going to be looking at Royal Visit from Yellow Games and designed by Reiner Knizia. This is originally a... actually came out about 15 years ago under the name Times Square, uh, though there have been several international versions since. But this new edition updates the theme, adds beautiful new artwork from Carl James Mountford, uh, gorgeously presented with a cloth map and wooden pieces. Now unfortunately with the COVID lockdown I've not managed to play quite enough for a full review, but uh, I'll give you my initial impressions. I also meant to dress a little more uh, royally, but let's just say I've had a few too many quarantine pies. Now, if we're going to catch a king, we're going to need a pretty rich banquet. So today I'll be making a traditional Tudor-style game pie. Let's get to the kitchen. So we're going to start by dicing up the ingredients for our filling. I have here about a kilo of game meat, uh, in this case venison, elk, wild boar and turkey. That's just what my uh, local butcher happened to have on hand, but uh, you can use pheasant, pigeon, rabbit, uh, just whatever you have available, even, even beef. Uh, plus we have a packet of bacon and about a pound of mushrooms. And we're just going to dice that up fairly roughly. Then we're going to brown the meat for a few minutes on each side. We'll then put the meat to one side and start cooking the bacon, a few cloves of garlic and a couple of diced onions. And once that's sautéed for a few minutes we'll add the mushrooms. Once the mushrooms have softened we'll then add four bay leaves, the juice and zest of one orange, one and a quarter cups of chicken stock, a third of a cup of port, uh, and about a tablespoon of jam or chutney. I used a nice orange and fig jam. Now what I forgot to add at this point was a couple of tablespoons of flour just to thicken up the sauce before returning the meat to the mixture, giving it a good stir, and then letting it simmer on low for about an hour. You can then roll out your pie dough and fill whatever dish you'd like to use. I actually used a loaf pan just so I could imitate the rough dimensions of the game mat. Before adding the filling, you can optionally add a couple of handfuls of dried cranberries. They'll puff right up with uh, all the moisture from the pie and I really liked the tart flavour they added. Then you just want to lightly brush the edges with some beaten egg lay over another piece of pie dough, cut a hole in the center, and you're done. But you can of course experiment with any decorative flourishes you'd like. After baking for an hour, we have a game pie fit for a king. Or is it a king pie fit for a game? Either way, I hope that's whetted your appetite to play around. Let's get to the games room. Royal Visit is a game designed for two players, simulating a tug of war between two rival families trying to convince the king and his court to visit their respective chateau. On your turn, you'll play cards to influence the various characters, each with their own movement rules. The guards can move simultaneously, but must stay on either side of the king. The jester and magician move as they wish, but position them correctly and you can use their special abilities to move the king himself. They're his most trusted advisors, after all. At the end of your turn, you move the crown token towards you one space for each character in your chateau. 
If the king or the crown reaches your chateau, you win. This is a relatively simple but strategic little game. Your options are limited by the cards in your hand, but you do need some forward thinking to get an advantage over your opponent. It's certainly lighter in complexity compared to other abstract strategy games, but it's an easy introduction to the genre for younger or newer gamers, or for when you don't have the brain power to play four-dimensional chess. This almost feels like a version of one-dimensional chess if you are both fighting over one set of pawns. It also doesn't overstay its welcome. If no one has won by the time you've worked through the deck of cards twice, then victory goes to whoever's chateau the king is closest to. Now, I've admittedly been dismissive of abstract games before, in favour of more explicitly thematic games, but this really is a great example in how little a game needs in order to express itself thematically. I'm looking forward to trying this a lot more, especially with uh, non-gaming friends and family. It's easy to teach, the art and components make it really accessible and a great conversation piece. Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Feast. Now, between lockdown restrictions, general family and work commitments, and just the amount of time it takes to put one of these feasts together, I can usually only manage to put out one video a month or so. But if you want to be notified uh, the next time a video drops, don't forget to subscribe below. You can see a little sneak peek of what you can expect in the coming weeks here. Now, if you happen to be viewing this in the week or so after this uh, video drops, then you can catch my very first Twitch stream. At least the first I'm hosting live as part of the Terminal City Tabletop Convention. It's usually hosted right here in Vancouver, but they're going virtual this year, so you can all come along. I'll be presenting Cookies and Calico, uh, cooking some of my Calico cat-shaped cookies. Uh, you can all bake along, I'll be posting the recipe, uh, and I'll also just show off a bit of the game while the cookies are baking. So uh, come hang out and chat. And don't forget to feed the meeple.